to our first ever new member welcome. And yes, it happens to be virtual. So thanks everybody for taking some time tonight and sitting in and uh, we've got lots of great information to share. So um, the Alliance witnessed unprecedented um, trail, trail users last year. Um, many of you being one of those, you know, it was an amazing year in terms of folks getting out and utilizing the trail. Um, as we start 2021, we are almost 4,500 members. We welcomed over 1,500 members last year. So 1,500 new members joined us in 2020. That's almost a 40% increase from the previous year. So thank you everyone for um, joining us tonight and also with membership, we truly appreciate it. So even though things looked different last year, our mission of creating, supporting and protecting the Ice Age Trail did not change. Uh, we continued to acquire land to protect land. We continued to build new trail segment. We continue to maintain it. So more than ever, we realized the importance of this space and what it means to people. Um, and so welcome to the Alliance, welcome to this community. We're, we're so happy you're here. Um, we, like I said, we've, we've got a, a great show for you tonight. I'm gonna share my screen while I get going. So we're gonna, we're gonna share some information about the Ice Age National Scenic Trail. Um, we're gonna talk about our partners and our programs. Um, we're going to tell you how to get involved in ways you can engage with our vibrant volunteer community. Um, we also want to give you helpful resources to help you plan your next Ice Age Trail adventure. So we kind of mentioned this earlier, but please stay muted during this time. We've got a lot of people on the call and it just makes it easier for everyone. Um, we are utilizing breakout rooms. So at the end of the presentation, towards the end of the presentations, we're going to have small group discussions. And that's going to be a great opportunity to take yourself off mute and ask questions and talk to staff and um, just have those conversations. Um, if you are having issues hearing or maybe seeing things, please put that in the chat box so we can, we can help you with that while we're giving the presentation. So thanks again so much for joining us and we're gonna get started. Um, oh, and I'm, I apologize, before we get started, I just wanna announce we are recording this, um, but we do plan to send out an email post uh, presentation with the PowerPoint slides, the recording, and then also a short survey. So if you do miss something, we are, going, we are recording this. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my coworker, Luke Cloverdance. Thank you, Amy. Uh, hello, everyone. It's really great to be with you tonight. Um, well, sidebar conversation here, Amy, is I am not admitting people. They're coming in fast and furious, so good luck. Coming in. Okay, I got you. <laughs> uh, so thanks for joining us, and, and this is something that uh, we're excited to do. Uh, it's a little new for us, but... Uh, really excited to be able to connect with you folks right away and give you the best sort of uh, base layer knowledge that we can about about the trail and the alliance so um as we you know start talking about this one of the most important things about what we do is uh care for the ice age national scenic trail so that's what i'm going to start i'm going to start talking with and they're talking about and as many of you probably know that the ice age national scenic trail is a thousand mile footpath and it and it courses throughout Wisconsin following uh, the furthest advance of the last glacial uh, era. And, and in doing so, it really uh, captures and permanently protects a lot of the evidence of the last glacial event and, and last uh, significant climate change event uh, that we experienced. And, and so we've got a nice side-by-side -side comparison for you here. Uh, on the left-hand side of your screen is uh, an image that shows all of the, the lobes as they were advancing down from the North Pole some 20 some thousand years ago and in keeping in mind that there was there were a lot of advances and recessions throughout the Ice Age but um, you know we really look at that last uh, glacial advance and, and last era as the, 
the one that really set everything in place for us as a, as a trail. So, you know, as we look at the map on the left and we started in Door County, you can see where the Green Bay lobe and the Lake Michigan lobe came together. And that's really the, the place where the Ice Age National Scenic Trail got its roots and, and, and began uh, as an idea in the, in the mind of Ray Zilmer, one of our founders. And Ray Zilmer every Sunday would go into the Kettle Moraine State Forest with his family, no matter, no matter the weather conditions and, and um, you know, view the landscape and really felt that it was an important place to protect. Uh, into perpetuity and we carry that mission forward today in all of the work that we do with uh, land protection and, and then also trail construction which, which we'll talk about later but as the trail kind of went in between those two lobes of the Green Bay lobe and Lake, Lake Michigan lobe it sort of swung around towards the middle of the state near our present day uh, world headquarters of, of Cross Plains Wisconsin where we are nestled in the the driftless area and part of the story that we interpret is not only where the glacier went but where the glacier didn't go and so some of the the territory that you see on the western side of the driftless area whether it's cross plains or as we venture further north and look at the bifurcation or the donut hole uh, on the left hand side we're capturing some of that driftless uh, geology but in the eastern side we're capturing where the glaci glaciation did occur and and even more than that, the trail in those two places uh, protects some of the, the great uh, conservation legacy that our state has. On the eastern side of that bifurcation, uh, we go by John Muir's boyhood home. And a couple of years ago, we were fortunate enough to be able to protect some adjacent properties to John Muir County Park, where they're expanding the protection of John Muir's childhood home. Uh, and on the western side of that bifurcation, we go by Aldo Leopold's shack. So, two incredible uh, conservation minded uh, individuals that helped really set the, the stage for our, our work and, and in a lot of ways set the stage for the work across the nation and the national trail system. And as, the, as we continue north on that red line, we go through Langlade County, uh, swing around and then start heading west and end up about, a mile, about an hour and a half northeast of, of, uh, of St. Croix or of north, north of the Twin Cities in St. Croix. And, Throughout this route, you know, it would have been really easy to just do a straight line uh, between the western terminus and the eastern terminus. Uh, but, you know, the story and the, the landscapes that we covered along this route are, you know, as varied as the people that helped create the trail and the trail experience. So um, that winding and circuitous route around the state is, is really important to us, uh, not just from a geological standpoint, uh, but from an experiential standpoint. So, you know, where do we fit in in the, in the hiking community or in, in the national trails system community anyway? Uh, we are one of 11 national scenic trails. There are also um, additional national historic trails and, and together as a, a collective family designated by Congress, uh, in many ways we curate the American story, whether that is uh, geologic in our case or uh, the Potomac heritage or perhaps the Trail of Tears, a historical trail not shown on the map. Um, that really locks in a lot of the, the historical perspectives and, and, you know, our work within this community is really a, a collective uh, force for hiking trails in the United States. So each of the trails that you see, um, whether it's Continental Divide Trail or Appalachian Trail or Florida Trail, all of those trails together have their own national, or I'm sorry, have a nonprofit organization that, that they work with like we do like we are and they also work with the different federal agencies as well as their local partners so in our case the ice age trail alliance we are part of a what we call a triad uh, some of our partners that help create uh, or help us create support and protect the ice age national scenic trail are uh, wisconsin department of natural resources and the national park service and and collectively we work on different strategies uh, to help really meet the mission of the Alliance uh, and, and with the long-term goal of having a complete and continuous uh, Ice Age National Scenic Trail. So um, that's the, the brief uh, rundown of what uh, needs to be the Ice Age National Scenic Trail and to talk more about our work as an organization and how it fits in this um, partnership, I'm going to pass it over to my friend and colleague, uh, Mike Woolmer. There we go. Uh, thanks, Luke. Uh, welcome, everybody. It's a pleasure to uh, see all of you. A lot of new faces. Uh, 
And uh, that's what we're all about. Uh, um, I'd like to uh, I'd just point out uh, Luke made reference to our mission statement uh, that, um, that we, we're here to uh, protect uh, the Ice Age Trail, to create the trail, and to promote the trail. Um, we're in the process of working on our strategic plan right now and trying to update that uh, mission a little bit. Uh, we're increasingly uh, focused on uh, uh, conservation and, uh, and quality of life for uh, people. And that's become so evident this past year. So we're, uh, uh, that's moving along a bit. We also have a vision statement that is, is a little more colorful that I, that I think I'll just read to you. It, uh, it, it speaks more eloquently to what we try to do um, in getting to that final mission. Uh, in collaboration with our many partners, we envision a premier, continuous, and permanently protected Ice Age National Scenic Trail. Coursing through Wisconsin, the trail is a place where all people can enjoy and embrace the unique natural landscapes and cultural histories of Wisconsin, while finding physical and mental renewal in a peaceful setting and enduring spiritual connection to the land. Uh, that's what keeps us working here at the Alliance. And I think what has helped attract people uh, to, our, uh, to our work. Um, a little bit about our history. Uh, the Alliance uh, was established under another name in 1958 as the, as the Ice Age uh, Park and Trail Foundation. And shortly after that, a, another organization uh, called the Ice Age Trail Council. Uh, it was a kind of a funny situation in the sense that uh, when the trail was established or the organization was established in the uh, 1958, uh, Ray Zilmer that was mentioned earlier was the founder and visionary for the trail uh, and unfortunately passed shortly after the uh, Ice Age Park and Trail Foundation was founded. He represented an element of people from primarily the Milwaukee area that uh, were regarded as suits so they were legal professionals, corporate professionals, and what have you, uh, that were working on the logistical nature of getting an organization established uh, within the state of Wisconsin. And then we had another group, the council, that was kind of the boots. The uh, council embraced the, you know, on the groundwork. They're very scattered around the state. We had, uh, they were chapters in a sense, but uh, with little uh, common ground. They uh, worked individually to the best of their abilities to start creating the trail within what was largely county, uh, county lines. It was a scattered and kind of a convoluted organizational structure, but it did survive. Uh, in 1990, the two organizations uh, met and I'm told it wasn't the most uh, cordial get together, but they realized that, you know, they were both working toward the same goal, uh, that being the Ice Age National Scenic Trail and through a lot of negotiations and work with our partners uh, at the Park Service and the uh, DNR uh, ended up forming uh, what would become the Ice Age Park and Trail Foundation. Uh, that was 1990. Uh, we matured at that point rather significantly. It might've taken a couple of years and we didn't go from uh, right to adulthood. I'd say it was more infancy to toddler stage. Uh, we still had a lot of work to do. There was still a lot of, um, a controversy, if you will, and emotions involved uh, uh, from the past. Uh, and it wasn't until about the year 2000 when our current organization uh, started to uh, started to gel. We started uh, realizing that we had uh, a staff of, it was only uh, five people at the time, uh, working at remote locations around the state, uh, not well connected, but uh, eager to work. And uh, and, in, and, and, and putting our chapter uh, feet to the ground. Uh, curiously then around, uh, as the late 2000s came around, uh, uh, the Ice Age Park and Trail Foundation name seemed to imply that we were, you know, funding grants and organizations. Well, that uh, couldn't be farther from the truth. Not only were we not in a position to do that, but we, on the other hand, were out seeking grants and what have you. And for a lot of other reasons, uh, we went through a process that yielded the name Ice Age Trail Alliance to project the fact that we were collaboratively working together within our organization and outside of it with not only our primary partners, 
but uh, other episodic partners that uh, that uh, come up every year. Some uh, uh, for just one time, and other times uh, more uh, uh, more continuously. A great example would be Dane County. Uh, here in Dane County, the uh, county itself has been very very supportive of uh, trail. Uh, protection, trail, uh, land acquisition, and what have you, and other counties and municipalities and tribes have worked with us uh, uh, to that end. So here we are now as the Ice Age Trail Alliance. We've been in Cross Plains now since 19 or since 2008, um, and um, and uh, pretty happy with what uh, Luke described as our world headquarters. Uh, we have four programmatic areas. Uh, we have a trail centric uh, program area where as you might expect, it's it's around the uh, trail layout and design, and all those issues or regulatory issues and stuff that uh, uh, are important to uh, getting the trail on the ground. We have a land uh, program. Uh, we are an accredited land trust, so we hold land in both fee and easement uh, uh, around the state. In addition to all a uh, number of other properties that are owned by uh, other entities that uh, host the trail. We have an outreach and education program. You met Amy earlier. Amy is responsible for that end of our uh, of our operations. It's a it's a continuing goal to sustain us to introduce new audiences, to introduce the trail to new audiences as we evolve, uh, kids, adults, uh, in lots of different ways. Uh, and then finally, we have a philanthropic arm that uh, that uh, part of our organization that uh, reaches out to corporations and foundations and private individuals and members. Uh, to help support uh, our mission. We have a budget of about $2 million this uh, coming year. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. And overarching all of that is our communications. Uh, I hate to call it a program because it's more than that. It, you know, in communications, we have all those different things to talk about and, uh, and uh, promote. And so uh, uh, I don't look at it as a fifth program, but more of an overarching uh, commitment to those. Um, to that end here uh, in Cross Plains, we have 13 employees on staff here, 12 of which are full-time, one is part-time. Um, I'll introduce each of those after I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I came to the organization as a uh, on staff in 2007. Uh, my membership with the organization and volunteerism goes back to 1989, so I've served as a volunteer I've been working with our mobile skills crew. I served on our board, and I'm honored to be serving in this role here. It's a, uh, it's a position of a lifetime. Uh, uh, very, very engaging, very, very exciting, and uh, my colleagues uh, feel the same way, I think. I'll uh, introduce you to those people that are on, uh, on the call or available uh, here tonight. Uh, I'll let uh, Luke start off by introducing himself uh, again. Sure. So. Hi again, uh, I'm Luke Klobernance, I'm Director of Philanthropy. So um, I try to generate funds uh, to support the volunteers in the field and make new miles of trail. Uh, I joined the staff in 2013, been here ever since. And in addition to my work as, on staff, prior to that I was a volunteer and uh, 2003 through Hiker, I think. So I think that was the year. Uh, so good to be here with everyone, thank you. Uh, hi there, my name is Kevin Thusius. I'm Director of Land Conservation for the Ice Age Trail Alliance. I'm happy to celebrate uh, 20 years of working with the Alliance since uh, back in December. Uh, as Director of Land Conservation, I help purchase, protect properties, both for the Alliance to protect it and also our partners, DNR, counties, et cetera, and then manage the properties that we continue to take care of. Thank you. I'm Dave Klebe, I'm the interim trail program manager. I uh, take the land that Kevin protects and the ponds that Luke's that Luke raises and put them um, onto the into the ground as a brand new Ice Age trail. Uh, I hiked the trail in 2010 and be and came on staff in 2013. And like I said, I I help organize and lay out new trail and uh, keep expanding it. I'm Lizzie Ann Unruh, the communications manager, and I've been on staff for four years. And my, my fun job is helping the four program areas um, talk about what they do and um, 
promote all the various activities and we do that through publications like our uh, magazine Mammoth Tales. Um, I also uh, am responsible for the website, social media and editing the uh, guidebooks, Atlas and the data book along with my uh, cohort, Tiffany Stram. <coughs> Uh, my name is Patrick Leisner. I'm the newest employee at the uh, Trail Alliance. I started back in August. I'm the Fields Operation Coordinator working under Dave Klebe. Uh, basically, whatever he deems he's too important or busy to do, he throws on my plate and uh, I take care of it. So. I'm Eric Sherman. I'm our uh, membership coordinator. Uh, it'll be 15 years in June uh, for me. Um, and I'm super excited about this uh, opportunity tonight. I've always wished we could be doing a little more um, for our new members right out of the gate. And so I really appreciate uh, Amy, my coworker, for coming up with this idea and giving it legs. And um, it's uh, a really uh, good uh, step forward for us. Great. Uh, uh, make sure I'm off the mute here. Yeah, okay. Um, thanks, uh, uh, Eric. We've got a number of people that aren't able to be on the uh, call tonight. Uh, I'll uh, tell you a little bit about them. Uh, Joe Ellerson is our administrative assistant. Uh, she's the, uh, the voice you hear and the person you see when you uh, walk in the door here. Uh, she's been with us now for almost 12 years, uh, coming uh, here in another month or two. So we're excited to have Joe aboard. <clears throat> We have uh, Brad Crary's, our pro special projects coordinator. He's been here now for 13 years. As his title might imply, he's got a hat rack in his office that uh, um, I don't know that he knows every day what he's gonna be doing, uh, but it's usually not what he plans. Um, Eva Bowering is our land steward. She's been with us now for two years. She's responsible uh, for uh, monitoring properties, uh, stewardship activities, and uh, improving the quality of the lands that host the, uh, the trail. Uh, Tiffany Stram is our GIS and technology specialist. She's been here for 12 years. Uh, you can see we've got a pretty good retention rate with people. Um, and we have a Tiffany uh, over and above her talents as a, um, a GIS person. Uh, has got a lot of history in the uh, scenic trail world, having worked for the North Country Trail before the Alliance, but uh, we're uh, thrilled to have her aboard. Um, and then I'd like to also uh, take a moment here and mention that we do have two of our board members on the call tonight, uh, Nancy Peterson and Rab, Rob Malwicki are both uh, on the call here. Uh, it's hard with all these things here for you to wave, but uh, both of them have been on the board for a few years and uh, bring considerable value to uh, their responsibilities as managers and administrators to uh, frankly, keep track of me. <laughs> they're, they're my boss. So, uh, I got to say nice things about them on calls like this. Um, so with that, I'll, uh, I'll uh, turn it over uh, uh, to the uh, regular programmer here and just thank all of you for being here. And uh, we're here for you. So don't be bashful about uh, uh, getting in touch with us at any time. Thanks, Mike. We're going to turn it over to Eric now. All right, so I'm gonna talk about uh, how to get involved, um, especially as a volunteer. And uh, before I dive in here, I did wanna say that um, if you're a new member of the Alliance and you're thinking that volunteering is not in the cards for you um, just yet, or maybe further down the road, or maybe never, um, that's no problem at all. Um, <laughs> that should not be any source of shame or uh, embarrassment for you. Um, the majority of our members do not volunteer. Um, and so I just wanted to put that out there uh, right off the bat here. Um, if you do want to volunteer, we're, we're thrilled um, to have you. Um, you'll be joining a very big and dedicated group uh, in a normal year. As you can see here on this table, we're, we're regularly north of 70,000 volunteer hours. Um, which is equivalent to, in addition to all the people that Mike just introduced, adding another uh, 40 full-time staff to our efforts here. So 
It's a very big and dedicated and fun uh, group. In terms of um, the priorities that we set um, for our volunteers, we really try and focus on ensuring a positive experience for you, first and foremost, understanding that if we take care of you, uh, you're gonna take good care of the Ice Age Trail. Um, so that means focusing on working safely, um, having fun and giving you opportunities to grow your community. Um, the working safely part would typically be things like uh, giving you good training opportunities and making sure you have uh, a different kind of personal protective equipment than we're, we've been talking about lately, uh, such as, you know, chaps for train uh, for chainsaw work, things like that. Um, but now that in, we're in the midst of the pandemic here, um, working safely means taking very, very seriously all the relevant health guidelines um, around uh, COVID and social distancing and things like that. We did get a lot done um, starting last summer and we're very proud that we were able to do all of that in a very um, safe manner. Um, again, trying to take care of you um, as best we can. Um, a couple of ways uh, to get involved, a couple of pathways. Um, one would be through one of our 19 volunteer chapters uh, scattered along the route of the trail. Um, the other would be trail-wide events, and those are typically organized um, by our staff out of our main office. In terms of uh, chapter involvement, um, this is going to be um, with a group uh, in your neighborhood, um, and it's going to be focused on um, trail maintenance often. Uh, building awareness of the Ice Age Trail in your community. And um, the events that you will attend will often be pretty small, um, five, 10, 25 people. As you get your feet wet and you get familiar with the group, there are also opportunities to be doing work on your own. Uh, monitoring segments, trail maintenance, some of that type of stuff often can take place just on your own time. Um, the trail, uh, the chapters do vary considerably in terms of size and also even within different sizes, also uh, levels of activity throughout the year. And if you, do, um, if you do want to get involved with a local chapter uh, and you find out that there's not, not much going on at that time of the year, for instance, um, please reach out back out to the main office and we can try and find other opportunities for you to supplement what the local chapter has going on. Um, if you do want to get involved with the local chapter, um, each chapter has a volunteer who serves as a coordinator and um, that is a great person to start with uh, in terms of reaching out. Every chapter does have a, a page on our website and uh, those pages do include the coordinator uh, contact information uh, on that page. So if you haven't reached out yet and uh, gotten familiar with the coordinator of your local chapter, uh, I would definitely urge you to do that as a, as a good place to start. Um, moving on then in terms of the uh, larger scale events that are gonna be drawing volunteers from around the trail uh, and beyond, um, I mentioned Starting last summer, we of course had to start doing things uh, considerably differently than business as usual. And so we came up with this um, umbrella initiative called Reconnect, which was really aimed at getting people back out on the trail working, uh, but doing so safely. And um, we are continuing that into this season. And uh, some of the events that we'll be having uh, well, I should mention, you should be getting an email soon um, with all the details you could want about these events. So I'm, we'll flip through them here. Uh, don't feel like you have to take down notes right now because uh, you'll be getting plenty more information about these. Um, so moving uh, around the trail, different, different events, different places. 
in a normal year, some of the events that you're seeing here might have 100, 200, 250 participants. We can't do that this year. Um, there are gonna be participation caps uh, on some of these events uh, with the goal, of course, of, of keeping everyone safe and healthy. Um, and that just brings me to another point I wanted to bring up. I've seen signs of amazing interest, uh, unprecedented levels of interest in volunteering. Uh, and of course, our membership has grown a ton, but along with that, the interest in volunteering is, I think, growing as well, um, in part because people are bored. <laughs> but um, this is unfortunately such a tough year. And I just wanted to say that um, the opportunities are going to be lower than they would be in a normal year. And um, so I'm just asking, asking for patience and that you may have to, some of the enthusiasm that you're feeling right now, you may have to bottle uh, and save uh, for another year or hopefully maybe the end of this year when we are starting to able to um, get back to normal a bit. Um, moving on, um, one other resource on our website that I wanted to point out was our Volunteer Resource Center. If you follow the, the About the Ice Age Trail Alliance uh, menu, you see a little red arrow there. Uh, and then within that uh, menu, the member and volunteer resources. This um, is kind of an A to Z uh, reference point for the whole volunteer experience. And so um, that's a good place to check out as well uh, as you're starting to get your feet wet. Um, one other opportunity I'll, I wanted to point out, um, I'm sure most of us are looking for ways to get outside uh, starting as soon as possible. Um, this will be an indoor one that is indoors from the comfort of your own home. And that is our annual conference. Um, in a normal year, again, we'd have a couple hundred people there gathering, having a great time. This year, of course, it's going to be virtual um, but it's still going to be a really great event and uh, a great way to learn a lot and also to start, as I mentioned, building your community, understanding what our community about, is about and how you can start to fit in. So uh, again, very, very happy to have this event tonight. Very happy that you've all joined and really looking forward to um, starting to see some of you out on the trail. All right, and the next portion of our evening here for the next few minutes anyway, is to highlight some of the hiker resources that we have on our website that can help you um, enjoy your adventures on the Ice Age Trail, all that much more. So um, when you arrive at our website and you uh, click on the Explore the Trail tab, there's a drop down menu and it takes you to the hiker resources map guidebook uh, and more webpage. And um, if you would click through to the trail map, this is our online hiker resource map. And as you zoom into the map itself with your, the, with your um, toggle on your mouse, then the items that are, um, different icons, uh, the information becomes just that much more uh, detailed for you. And you can see up in the right hand corner there, um, the, as, you, as you zoom in then the legend information becomes um, very um, detailed and explanatory in terms of what you, what is, what are the options for you. Next. And if you click on the next um, set of the layer list next to the legend, then what that also gives you is options in terms of what you would like to see when you arrive at that map. So right now, um, the, all those little boxes are checked, which means that if there are uh, backpack shelters in the area or um, if there are hunting closures, all those items are gonna be shown on the map. 
um, if you would want to narrow your scope down, then you just unclick the different boxes and then um, it limits the number of items that show up for you, which can be, can be helpful depending on what, what you're wanting to see. Next. And then you can also change the base layer of the map just to give you different perspective in terms of um, what, once again, what's available and the topography and different options for you. So we really encourage you to play around and um, you know, make sure that the interactive map is as useful um, and you know, um, provides you the extra information. And one other quick thing, if you would click, for example, on um, any of those icons, then there's a little pop-up box that um, opens up that gives you more information that gives you, for example, the GPS location specific to that parking location. Um, one last thing related to the map here, um, on the upper right-hand corner, if you, whoops, I was just gonna point out the search, uh, the search bar up in the right-hand corner. So if you were to look for a very specific um, segment, if you didn't know where exactly it was located in the state, you type that in there and it will take you directly to it. So another, another nice feature. And next, uh, another component of the hiker resource page is the trail alerts. So it brings you directly to a layer on the map that lets you know if there are concerns uh, along the way that you might need to know about. Um, and a nice feature on the lower left, I can't see it very well on my screen, but um, is that there's an opportunity if you're out hiking and you encounter a downed tree, flooding, um, something that you, you know, that would be a concern for the next hiker coming down the, down the line, then there's an opportunity for you to uh, fill out a short form that comes to staff members who review it and then often send that information on to chapter uh, main, trail maintainers who then are able to either quickly take care of the issue or it goes on to this trail alert to be more of a long-term uh, awareness feature. Next. And then we also want to mention that we do have uh, a, mobile, uh, an, a mobile map as well through the Gut Hook Guides app. And um, you can check it out online. We, there's a free option for one of the sections of the map that you can try out. And one of the nice things about this is that um, you don't need cell service in order to uh, find your way on the trail. Next. And then we get a lot of questions about the publications. If you're members, you probably have dipped your toe in and made um, a purchase or two of some of these items. Um, but I'm gonna point you to some of the, what the internal content of it looks like. So the Ice Age Trail Atlas is a book of maps. One of the nice features here is that we give you mileage points between short sections. Um, the maps, also um, cover all of the connecting routes as well. So you have a full sense of, full scope of the trail as it currently exists. The guidebook is a nice uh, text uh, heavy description of the, what you might encounter when you are out on the trail. The other nice feature is that there are uh, embedded maps in that as well, along with um, trail access and parking information and area services information. Next. And then finally, the data book, which is only in an online format, um, downloadable PDF. And what this is, is um, basically it's a mileage table of the trail and it's a very popular tool for uh, our through hikers because it gives you um, you know, very clear point-to-point -point information about uh, where, to, where to turn and what the roads are, as, as well as attending uh, service information. And then in the, one of the final features here of that page is the more resources to explore. So we've got lots of um, extras for you to um, download and take advantage of as well as ways to connect with our online community. So um, we've got connection to our uh, Ice Age Trail Facebook group. 
as well as a group that's known as the Thousand Miler Wannabes. So we really encourage you to um, become part of the Ice Age Trail family and join those two uh, social media groups as a way to connect and ask questions um, and uh, find out just more information about how other people are exploring the trail. And then finally, one other page we like to point out for folks is the actual Explore the Trail page itself, um, which contains information that you, I just went through, as well as um, day hikes, itineraries, more information about our trail communities, um, specific uh, information on hiking during hunting season. So just a really nice, um, broad overview and ways to get connected with very specific pieces of information. So uh, please take time to check out that page. And then of course we are on social media and these are the three uh, platforms that we are uh, part of, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We encourage folks um, to share your story and your adventures and outings using our uh, these tags and um, join us and follow us on our different uh, social media platforms. So thank you. Well, thanks everybody. I hope the, the breakouts, um, you guys had fun at the breakouts and opportunity to ask questions and introduce yourselves and share your story a little bit since we've shared our story. Um, Thanks everybody for attending. Yes, it's 701. So really appreciate you guys coming on board. We hope we can see you for the annual conference coming up here, April 17th, April 15th, 16th, and 17th. Registration will be coming out soon. And then info at iceagetrail.org and there's our phone number. Um, drop us a line if you guys have questions or comments or concerns. Um, we're more than happy to, to chat with you and, and, and help help with your um, help further your membership. So thanks everybody for joining and we'll see you on the trail. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you. A lot of thank yous. Bye-bye. Have a nice night. Bye -bye.